is Everyday Expertise, and I'm Angela, and I'm joined today with um, by Florida painter Susan Hansen. She's uh, also taught workshops across Florida and in New Mexico. Hello! Hello! <laughs> so how did you get started doing art? Oh, I've always been interested in art. I went to Syracuse University. I was in the art school. And then, um, because... I couldn't find a job as an artist when I graduated. I went into advertising, which was fabulous. So I have um, 28 years in advertising as an art director. So I was always in that, in that design aspect of art mm -hmm. and always taking classes. I was in New York for 13 years and took classes all the time, fine art classes. I continued that all the time I was working. I just enjoyed that and then when we my husband and I we moved to Florida and it was time to get out of advertising so I came here I taught art I taught watercolor mm. and did that for 12 years and then um I sound very old I am um and now I'm just painting on my own and teaching in my studio mm. I haven't during COVID, but I was teaching in my studio and painting on my own. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah, not old, but experienced. <laughs> Very <It's> experienced. experienced. <laughs> <laughs> what are your preferred mediums? Well, I started in watercolor, which I absolutely love. Mm. And when I get really frustrated with acrylic, I say, the hell with it. I'm going back to watercolor. So I, I go between the two. I use a lot of gouache as well. So I'm just in those three mediums. Mm. Watercolor, gouache, and acrylic. Mm -hmm. And I canvas now. Oh, yeah. Um, what or who are your major influences? Oh, I'm a huge fan of the San Francisco figurative painters of the mm -hmm. 50s. I love Linda Christensen. I know she's a fan of them as well. Um, Alex Konevsky, I think it's just remarkable. Mm -hmm. so, you have a very interesting sort of surre almost surreal kind of uh, style. I like your, I, I really like your um, sort of Napoleon women paintings. Now that's uh, interesting because that's been sort of a theme. I believe I started it in about uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. And I sort of did it as a metaphor to empower women that they would have this military costume, this, you know, show of strength. Mm. And it's just, it has really morphed now. But I am, as of today, still using that mm. theme a little mm. bit. Yeah. Um, another another collection of yours is your sheep series. Yeah. Um, what was the inspiration for these paintings? <laughs> that, that was just really a quirky thing. I was teaching and I was trying to encourage people. I think one of the most wonderful things you can do for yourself is to work in a series. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to encourage my class to work in some kind of series. I didn't care what it was, just something that you could repeat, not necessarily the same painting by any means, but an idea, you know, a barn, a tree, I didn't care. So this girl pulled out from her wallet this picture of a sheep standing on grass. I mean, it was not any sort of spectacular picture by any mm -hmm. means. And she said, well, could you do this? Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and just sort of, you know, to prove my point, I said, of course I can. And that was really the beginning of that sheep series. And that was just fun. And I'm still doing them once in a while when I just want to have fun. <laughs> That's I awesome. That. Yeah, that was, it was funny. And her name happened to be Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, well, then it was fate. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that was... You know, that was so good for me because that series evolved so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still, to this day, recommend to do series. Mm -hmm. you, you'll always get something spectacular in that. 
So uh, this shows very much a process. Uh, can you walk me through your process, say, from idea to finished piece? Well, I usually have a, my sketchbook. I have a lot of uh, sort of random thoughts. I put thoughts or sketches or anything that just sort of comes to mind and doesn't necessarily have to make any sense at all. And I work with that. I can tell you right now, I have not resolved an idea that I've been working on for almost two years. Mm. And um, I wanted to do something with my little character, Dear Prudence, um, having to do with the idea of I'm beside myself. I am, mm. you know, frizzle forever. I still am sketching and writing things down, time, trying to resolve that. So I usually get it in a sketchbook and I know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And then I go, you know, <clears throat> right now I'm working on large canvases. So, you know, I just take it up into a canvas and, you know, begin the process of painting. It's usually resolved before I paint. Mm -hmm. However, recently things haven't been resolved. And I just said, I'm going to just sort of paint now what I'm feeling and I'll resolve it as I go, which is what I'm doing right now. Mm. So I use, you know, different techniques to get there. Right. But I always know when I'm not there, I like to live with the painting for a long time. I hang it on the wall in my studio and I walk by it. Or I park it, as I call, in my mm -hmm. closet and not to be seen for a couple of months. And then when I see it again, you know, usually I can say, oh, I know what I'll do. I know how I'll resolve it. Mm. But I think artists know when things are not resolved. Yeah. yeah. How do you know when a piece is finished? They're never finished. <laughs> I can keep working well, on them ever. Usually when it's day. ready to sign, you could say. <laughs> it's uh, usually a due date is when I say it's done. Yeah. Mm. I'm one, you know, I'm one of those. And I'm one of those also that works up to the last minute. That's probably from my advertising, which was, you know, the idea of resolving, you know, a concept for a client. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of the same thing. That's true. Yeah. So At it's some point, it's for me, it's yeah. problem solving. Yeah. At All some point, it has to be done, right, in advertising. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So this is it. It's done. But, you know, I can always work on them again. I've, take, I've been known to take things out of frames and rework them wow. plenty of times. Mm. Yeah, you, they're never done. So I guess you don't, you don't seal your work with any kind of products or anything. I do. I, um, I seal my acrylics mm -hmm. with a varnish, but you can rework right on top of that. If it has to, and I've done that. That's and true. you have to reseal it. Yeah. So... Yeah, they're never done. They're always a work in progress. That's art for you. <laughs> exactly. What's something you wish you'd known about painting before you began? I wish I had started in oils, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I would, when I was in uh, at Syracuse, acrylics had <laughs> just like come onto the market. And mm -hmm. so that's what we used. And I really regret that I didn't learn oils way back when. I have since done some oils mm -hmm. and I really love it, but um, I don't feel really accomplished in it just now. So I said sort of dab in it. I asked mm -hmm. my, you know, I'm always calling my friends who do oils. How do I do this? You know, what do I do now? So mm -hmm. that's my one regret. I wish I had. Mm -hmm. And I probably wish I'd started a whole lot earlier getting serious about painting. Yeah. But everybody can, sure feels that way, but you have to make a living too. That's true. Yeah. How do you, uh, how do you integrate your art into your daily life? How do you, uh, how do you manage the sort of work life balance? I try to paint every day. Mm -hmm. Seven days a week, I try to paint about three hours, three to four hours. Mm. 
I, um, I sort of regard it as going to work as a job. Mm. You know, it's work. Well, you've got to, right? Yeah. So I'm pretty disciplined about that. And now that I'm not teaching because of this pandemic, mm. you know, I certainly have more time to paint. Yeah. So. How are you, how are you managing with the, uh, with the pandemic and with lockdown? Yeah, I, I, I'm so curious. I'd love to hear from other artists as well. I'm finding it really hard mm. to feel motivated and uh, sort of inspired I, I have a show coming up with my sister in June of 2021 at the Coral Springs Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. And so I have plenty of motivation to get painting. Mm. But that's, that's been put on hold right now. You know, everything yes, is sort I of... I imagine. Good. Yeah, so I don't quite know what's going to go on there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm in a gallery that is very active on the internet. So... Hopefully that, you know, that mm. keeps me painting as well, getting new work it's true. there. It's true. I mean, uh, websites and virtual tours and 360 yeah. virtual tours of museums may be the future. <laughs> I, I hope not. Because I, I, there's something to see a painting. There's something oh, yes. to feel a painting right in front of you. It's mm. so different. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the shows that, you know, are active down here in Florida. I just wanted to give a plug for Florida Watercolor Society. They have a big convention coming up. Mm. It's going to be, you know, a virtual. Everything's online. Yeah. So, you know, it's just not quite the same. No, no, it'll, it'll never really be the same. There, Like you said, there is a certain, there's a certain, feeling a different sort of feeling when you're actually yeah, in the gallery with the piece see, i mean to see strokes and mm. you know brian ruttenberg is on the internet right now he, he's with um he's with a gallery in south carolina and i'm sure people know his name i mean his stuff is so tactile it's so fabulous to see mm. it you just want to, you know, touch it almost. It's so beautiful. And it's on the internet. And you don't get that feel. Mm. Yeah, I think it's unfortunate. Yeah. You know. yeah, it's true. I know the Metropolitan Museum opened up today, which is wonderful news. Oh, yeah. In New York. So mm. they're in limited capacity. But, you know, people are going to be able to go see art. Yeah. So. I think, it'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting. I think it'll be interesting to see how they manage the the physical distancing measures and things like that. You know, but you know, things like that. They're it's a big place, right? So at least they have that sort of. They can mark things off on the floor and things like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so happier. What is your favorite aspect of art? I think. I love seeing people respond to my paintings. You know, I had a couple of shows and, you know, it is fun to just sort of creep up behind somebody and listen to their comments to see what they're seeing. I think that is so satisfying. You know, I, I mean, you hear good and bad, so mm -hmm. it's a learning experience as well. But I do sort of really enjoy that. Surprise, you know. yeah. something for everyone to uh to, to remember if they go to one of your yeah, shows is know. that you might be right behind them <laughs> i do i always say oh you know i'm the artist <laughs> especially if it's positive but, yeah. do you have a least favorite aspect anything that frustrates you uh yeah acrylic <laughs> Uh, you know, I think watercolor is so much more forgiving. I love, love watercolor. Yeah. It's a beautiful medium. It's one, it's just my, my very favorite. You know, I'm, I've been doing acrylics, I don't know, maybe six years now, five years. And I find it very difficult still. You know. What about it makes it difficult? Is it that it's very thick or is it just... Um, uh, it's just it... the way it moves, the way it dries, 
you mm. know. Is it more yeah. time? I mean, obviously, I like it. It's not my least <laughs> favorite thing about art, but yeah. <laughs> but I'm still a big watercolor fan. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. So, um, how do you cope with stress or uh, or obstacles when uh, when things are just not working out? I park the paintings mm. somewhere where I can't see them for a while. Yeah. I have a quite a, well, not quite a few, I have about four right now that are parked mm. in my studio, not to be seen by anyone or myself, there. I'm waiting for those little fairies to come in and resolve them for me. <laughs> now, sometimes, you know, it. I've had one epiphany in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I did the sheep series. And that was also a show at the Coral Springs Museum in 08. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I needed some more paintings. And I swear, I woke up one day and I went, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And it was um, a self-portrait with the sheep. Mm. And it's called She's Come Undone. I've had one epiphany mm. ever. <laughs> no, I'm waiting for well. the next one. <laughs> it would be lovely. Sometimes there's one. I mean, I'm waiting. Yeah. <laughs> so do you basically you have I, I guess since you say you have like four canvases right now parked, you you have probably multiple pieces going at at once. Yes. Yeah. yeah I do. Mm -hmm. And then you know I just go back and forth. Um, you know, and then one when. I get something going on something. I mm -hmm. stay. I stay with that, and the others just sort of sit for a while. Mm -hmm. So, well, that makes sense. It's probably a, it's probably a good way of working anyway, right? Because if you yeah. if you only have one going at a time and you get stuck, then that could sit for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in that vein, do you do you get block? I mean. I guess Absolutely. in a way, having having to sort of park things is is kind of like block. But do you get points where you just you have no ideas at all. No, I always have an idea. I always grab my watercolors if I don't have an idea, mm. and just plop paint around. Yeah, and, and think, and I go through my sketchbooks. I mean, I I go back and forth on my sketchbooks. So looking, what was I thinking <laughs> at one time or another? So. that's a good no it's a good it's a good way of of dealing with with the uh, with block i think is yeah sort of look yeah just and I think, mess around you know that sort of thing yeah, yeah. you know i think it, it goes into your subconscious you know this whole idea of trying to resolve something sort of putting it out there mm. yeah. makes sense i talk to my other artist friends as well yeah and they're they're helpful so that's good so we've we've actually we've talked about a lot, but do you have any more advice for people starting out in painting? Yes, just really enjoy it and just go with your gut, go with your heart. That there is nothing like painting from your heart because it's so authentic, and not to worry about what people say, what other people say. Just go for it. You'll learn. Don't throw anything out because it's fun to look back on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just go for it. I think it's a wonderful way to spend time. I'm mm -hmm. thinking during this pandemic, if I didn't have painting, I don't know what I would be doing. I don't cook. I probably would just be eating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm really happy to have something to go to. I'm very fortunate, actually. That's lovely. Yes. So, there you go. Yeah. All right. So, uh, how can people find out more about you and your work, Susan? Okay. I have um, a web page. It's mm -hmm. SusanHanson.com, and that's H A N S S. E N Susan mm -hmm. I'm on Instagram. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And that is Susan Frost, F R O S T Hansen. Okay. And that's sort of how visible I am. I am with JF Gallery in West Palm Beach. Mm-hmm. They're spectacular. They're wonderful. Um, I'm going to be on a panel for Florida Watercolor, which is September Mm -hmm. 22nd, uh, talking about the Watercolor Societies, AWS and NWS, which I'm a member, yeah. Well, that's that's lovely. And we'll have uh, links to all that in the description below. So click down there if you want to know about more about Susan and her lovely work. Um, and yeah, and you said you mentioned that you have a show coming up. Yes, that Plus, is hopefully. Um, <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. That's with my sister, who is also an artist, and she's a printmaker. Mm. Oh, well, she does woodcuts. Mm. So um, it's at the Coral Springs Museum of Art, June twenty twenty one through August twenty twenty one. Now, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's true. All right. Thank you very much, Susan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Yes, it was. It really was. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been Everyday Expertise. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this interview. Be sure to share this video with friends and colleagues who may also enjoy this topic. Let us know your thoughts by leaving a comment below or check the description for our social media. See you next time.